Hey guys, in this how to mod video, we are going to cover The Witcher 1 Enhanced Edition and The Witcher 2 Assassin of Kings. Now, The Witcher Enhanced Edition is fairly easy to mod, but the thing about it is there is not a whole lot of mods for it, and there's even less of those mods that are actually useful and benefit the game, in my opinion. So we're just, just going to go over a few of the popular ones, in fact, only two, because most of them install the same way, but these two install very different from each other, so I want to show you both of them so you have an idea what to expect. The first mod we are going to cover is the Genie Wish mod. Now, this is a cheap mod. There is no way around it, but with some restraint, it could be a mod that you can tweak the game just enough to how you want to uh, increase your gameplay. Skill points, etc., etc. I mean, you can add gold. There are other cheats to it. It's not a mod that I personally use, but this is a real popular one, and it installs just like most of all the others. So what we're going to do is this is just going to be an example. Let's go ahead and click on that. Let's let uh, the Nexus connect. There you go. <laughs> and of course, you always want to download the newest version here. As you can see, we have one that was released in 2016. So that's a, a boon right there. Let's go ahead and click on Daniel, download manually because the Witcher does not install with the Nexus mod manager. It has to be done completely manually. So let's go ahead, once it's downloaded, let's go ahead and close this page since we no longer need it, and go ahead and open your zip file. So I'm going to click it open, and as you can see, based on the contents, there doesn't seem to be a whole lot of clue of where you need to put it. Now, of course, it is always good to read the install directions that come with any mod, just to make sure that you follow the author's directions properly. But I already know what to do, so if you want to go back and read how to do it, you know, be my guest. But for me, I am just going to stick it exactly where it needs to go. Because I have enough experience to know where it needs to go. Don't read too much into that, people. <laughs> so uh, here I am navigated to my Witcher Enhanced Edition folder. And I'm going to jump over to the data folder, which is pretty standard for mods that they usually go in the data folder or a subset of the data folder. So with this one, all you need to do is just grab it and drop it, boom, right into the data folder. And according to the install directions, that is all that you need to do. So I'm going to go ahead and close this and close this here to get it out of my way. And we're going to go ahead and jump into the game to see if the darn thing works. All right, guys, here we are in the game real quick. So I'm just going to go ahead and load up an old save. Something I tossed in from the end of the game. This is the save I usually keep to import into The Witcher 2 when I do uh, my plays of it. Dun dun dun! Take what's yours, Witcher. You wanted it. Damn straight I did. Now, it usually takes a couple seconds or so for the message to appear that the mod is installed. There we go, received the magic bottle. Now the hardest thing about The Witcher is remembering the movement because it is very different from the other Witcher games. And so I'm not even gonna try, it's been a while. So I'm just gonna open up the inventory and where's our magic bottle? There it is. Let's uh, go ahead and right click on it. Suddenly a genie appears. All right, let's close it out. And there he is, purple and ugly. What you can do is now you can talk on him. Greetings, oh cheating one. How may I serve you, master? I like it how he calls us the cheating one. You rat bastard! What can you do? Let me see, I can grant you a wish, but choose wisely, for contrary to legend, you get but a single wish. Now, whether that's true or not, that's up to you. But as you can see here, you can get gold, talents, armor, armor! There you go. It's a, a pirate version of the armor. The weapon, now I know my guy has about 30,000 orins on him, so let's go ahead and choose gold. Such a common wish. Very well, Master. Here's 10,000 orange. Good day. And he disappears. Now, I, I believe I can summon him again. And get more stuff if I want. If I go in here, yeah, it's still there. Go away. Go away. There we go. But as you can see, I have 40,000 orange roughly right now. Don't we wish we had one of these in real life? So we don't have to worry about wasting our money on lottery tickets. 
There we go. The mod is installed. It is working and we are ready to jump into a more complicated mod. Now a lot of these mods don't work with other mods. You got to make sure to read the author's notes. Like the one I'm going to show you next will not work with this one. So I got to remove this one, which is easy. I'll go ahead and show you that real quick. And then we'll jump into the mod that is the most popular on the Witcher Nexus site. And it installs very differently. All right, let's go ahead and jump into that. But let me get out of here first. All right, here we are back at the Witcher install folder. So how we get rid of that mod is just jump to the data folder. We select it here and we do the old delete. Gone. No more trouble. Mod's out of your way. And now we can jump into installing the second mod that I want to show you in this little tutorial. All right, the next mod I want to show you guys is Rise of the White Wolf Enhanced Edition. What this basically does, it is a pretty large overhaul of the game. As you can see, it changes some visual appearances. It changes just a heck of a lot. This is something you're really interested in. You're going to want to go here. You want to read the entire thing to make sure you comprehend exactly what the mod does. Because pretty much when you have, for The Witcher, if you want to put this thing in here, you really don't want to mess with anything else. Because um, this changes quite a bit. So we're just going to go ahead and jump into the files here. What we do is we got the setup edition and we got the zip edition. Now I'm going to go ahead and download the setup edition because this mod adds so much. It's nice to have a feature to get rid of it all. So we're just going to go ahead and click on download manually. As you can see, most people are smart and like to download the setup wise. <laughs> As you can see, it's about just under 300 megabytes in size. So it's pretty sizable for a mod of a game of this age. So we're going to let it finish downloading and then we'll jump into the next step. All right, the mod is done downloading. So we're just going to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and show all. We'll jump in here. We'll show it in the folder. Let's close this out. We can now get rid of these old ones since we're done with that one. And we're going to go ahead and launch this EXE. See what it gets us. Yes, English. Select the main directory. Now, of course, from here, you want to go to where your, um, what your Enhanced Edition is installed. Click Select Folder. There we go. We must agree. Agree to let it mess up your game. All right, click Next. And then you gotta choose exactly, you know, what you want your setup to be. If you want it in Polish or English, CFR, compat uh, uh, FCR compatibility. What was I say? Compatibility. Oh my God. Nope. Let's just go character textures, skyboxes, ballads, trial of the herb soundtrack in the main menu. Ooh. Let's go ahead and just. Put it all. No enemy life bars, new dialogue fonts, item icons. Yeah, let's just install it all. Let's see how much we can screw up. Install. All right, let's let us do his thing. And we'll see if the game starts. See if it doesn't go kabloom. All right, we are now finished. So we're going to go ahead and see what the next step is in this process. Perhaps it is up, clicking that icon right there. As you can see, this is a different icon than your uh, typical Witcher Enhance icon, which is this one. Let's see if, for what reason, why? Is there any reason, or is it just an icon change? Let's go ahead and do a comparative over here. Well, that's to a Steam launch, so that isn't going to help any, but I can just pretty much tell from here. Looks like it is just a change of the icon. If you want to use the old launcher one, you can. You can just toss this one in the recycle bin. I guess it really doesn't matter. But we're going to go ahead and launch it from the fancy schmancy new icon. All right, we got a cool new little Witcher Enhanced menu here. That's pretty, pretty nice. It's actually pretty clean. Doesn't seem to be any ghosting or whatever. So we're going to go ahead and launch the game and uh, take a look at it. All right, here we are inside the Witcher Rise of the White Wolf. As you can see, the entire screen is different actually it looks really really nice I actually like this so we're just going to go ahead and load the older game and see what kind of changes it makes to an existing save the uh, loading screen is in a language in which i cannot understand so i will give it that oh his armor is definitely different
His face looks a little angrier, but the color is nice. Is that lipstick on his neck? That's hilarious. That is hilarious. So let's see what kind of changes we got in here. This is noticeably different. The inventory for sure is very different. Wow, very minimal. How about the hero screen? Very simplified as well. Oops, let's go back in here. All right, well. Overall, things look uh, look pretty nice. Yes, yes, yes. Shooting stuff. As you can see, the original Witcher was definitely kind of a, a click-to-move sort of game. You can move with the keyboard, but it is actually not easy. It's, it's not easy to do a turn radius. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's some way to change it. I just can't honestly remember how to do it. It's been so long. But as far as the mod itself, it does look really nice. It's much more vibrant, a little more alive looking. Some people may not like that because the Witcher is supposed to be, I don't know, colored akin to maybe somewhat gothic, even though I don't really think that's the case. I think it's just a, a hardcore mature fantasy set in a realistic world. Whereas uh, in realistic world, colors actually look real and not washed out just to look gothic. <laughs> but it looks great. I, I I might have to retry playing this game with this mod install to see how it goes. You know, not right now. I got a lot on my plate, but definitely something to look at in the future. So if you're thinking about playing this game again, I would suggest trying out this mod. If you've never played it before. I always recommend playing the game in its original state before jumping into modding it, just so you have the full experience, you know, in your brain, so you can really tell the differences that a mod makes. All right, let's go ahead and figure out how to uninstall this thing, and then we can jump into The Witcher 2. All right, here we are back at the Witcher Enhanced Edition folder. One thing I really want to make clear real quick is before you install this mod, make sure that the Witcher game is updated to 1.5 and you have all your ducks in a row in regards to the version of the game. Just wanted to let you know that really quick. But back to uninstalling this mod. Now, unfortunately, there is no quick little uninstall command. So there are a few steps that you have to do to take this game back to its original state. The first thing you need to do is go into the Witcher folder, to the data folder, and delete to this little folder right here, the Z underscore Z. Just go ahead and remove it, it's gone. But, let's go ahead and go back. The backup folder here, this good stuff here, you gotta select it all. Go ahead and cut it out, and drop it back into your main folder, overriding anything that's in there. This is putting back the original launcher and some system files. So once that is done, all you really need left to do is remove, you know, the icons that the installer puts for the game on your desktop or inside your start menu. And the game should go ahead and start up in its original form. Let's go ahead and do that to make sure the darn thing works again. Or else I'm going to be uh, verifying files through Steam. I don't want to do that. All right, guys, here we are back into the game and everything seems to be exactly as it should. The inventory is back how it's supposed to be. The hero screen and everything seems to be in complete working order. Nothing seems to be exploding. So the uninstall process is complete. Good deal. <laughs> All right, guys, this is how to uh, mod the Witcher Enhanced Edition. As you can see, there's really not a whole lot you can do to the game itself, but there is enough that can be done to tweak the game to make it a bit different. But as we go on to The Witcher 2, there is more that we can do with the game. And then eventually, hopefully, I will release a How to Mod Witcher 3 series, which is going to be more complicated because there's so much more that you can do. And it's awesome, and I love it. And let's go ahead and move on to The Witcher 2 Assassin of Kings. All right, here we are at the Witcher 2 Nexus page. Now, one thing I want to say about the Witcher 2 is that in general, it is 
easier to install mods than in the Witcher 1. You probably think, well, how can it be easier? Because you don't want to just drop stuff in the data folder. Well, yes, and in this one, you just dropped it in the Cook PC folder, but it's all centralized and it's very easy just to click into the Cook PC folder and see the stuff that's installed so you know what's what. Also, you can use the Nexus Mod Manager to install these mods. So that is honestly, I with the, with the Witcher, I manually install almost everything, even in the Witcher 3. In fact, I manually install everything. So you can use uh, Nexus Mod Manager if you wish. There's no reason why not to use it. But for me, I like to do it manually, and I'm going to show you how to do it manually because the Nexus Mod Manager way, you just go to Files. Some of these, you still have to download man manually. There is no Mod Manager method. As you can see, this one does not have it. Let's go over to Dynamic UI. This one also does not have it. This is why I'm showing you how to do it manually. If it does have the Download with Mod Manager button, you can go ahead and do it that way because it'll automatically put it where it needs to go. But because this one does not, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do these manually. So this one here is the top rated file on the Nexus for The Witcher 2. It's extra talents per level for people that want to flush out Geralt a bit more than just having the limited amount of skill points that the game gives you. So we're gonna go ahead and just download the main file. There are other options as you can see here. You know, extra talents plus always win at dice poker. I mean, but what's the fun of that if you're always going to win? But let's just go ahead and click it open. As you can see, we got a base scripts dot D zip. As some of you may recognize, this is a similar format that's used in the Dragon Age Origins uh, mod files. Just a, an interesting little thing to point out. Not necessarily um, <laughs> necessary for this topic, but I said it anyway. Now, if you go ahead and go to the instructions here, it says to install, just unzip it into your cook, PC, and replace file. Now, this is important for you to recognize. Replace file. It is going to override the original game file. Now, you don't want to do that. You do not want to get rid of your game files and create yourself a problem if you ever want to uninstall. So what you want to do is you want to go into your cook PC here. You want to go to this file. What is it? Base scripts D. Let's go ahead and short it by name, uh, backwards, base scripts D, and you want to real quick just rename this to like dot back. Just protect that file. You do not want it to be gone. And then at this point, you can just drop this right in and boom, the mod is installed and you are pretty ready to go. With some extra, extra points when you level. I'm not going to go ahead and level a character just to show you that you get extra points. You get extra points. Just trust me on this. So that is set. And you probably wonder, well, how, how many extra points? You know, just read the, read, read the page. It, it'll tell you. They saw that uh, a lot of you wanted a two points per level version. So you weren't as overpowered. So I'm assuming this version here gives you more than two. And, of course, it gives you a link for a two-point version if you wish to use that as well. But that is all you need to do to install this Extra Talents Per Level by Kalpa2004. So with that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and close it out. And we're going to go on to the next mod, which was a godsend to me, the Dynamic HUD. That's because in The Witcher 2, there's no option to disable the minimap from turning every time you did. For some reason, I just don't like it. It's like when I'm walking in real life and the room turns with me. It's just a little disorientating for me. I don't like it. So I wanted to get rid of that. That was the whole reason to get that. I just wanted that to stop. And that's one of the things that this fixes is that map from spinning around. But one thing you might want to take note is that the Act 1 minimap and the rest of the game are completely different as far as turning radius. So if you want to stop the map from turning, you have to use this optional file in Act 1. And then when Act 1 is over, you're going to have to go back to the original file provided for this in the rest of the acts i don't know why cg project red did that maybe it was an oopsie but that is the case so the save that i have up is in later in the game so we're just going to use this one just note if you're starting a new game let's go ahead and download this real quick see the file in here is this right here act one zip just drop that in you don't want to use both of these at the same time 
It's one of the other. So in Act 1, put this one in. Eh, go away. Go away. This file right here. This is the one you want to use in Act 1. Then when Act 1 is over, you're going to want to delete it. Right here. This right here, you're going to want it gone. Just delete it and then install the 1.3 version. But we're going to go ahead and just uh, install that right now. I know that might seem a little confusing, but that's what you need to do to get that darn minimap to work right. And this one here, you just drop it right in. Boom. Dropped in. And done. It's very simple. And you need to keep track of what these files are. Since these are all manual installs, you don't have any mod managers to do it for you. I really suggest use, a, use Notepad or actually use a physical pen or pencil and a piece of paper. I know some of you are like, what the heck is a pen and a piece of paper? Well, you know what? It exists. It's what we had back in the olden days. <laughs> so just to keep track of this kind of stuff, especially if you're going to mod a lot, it's very good to take notes because you can get yourself lost, lost trying to remember everything. So we got the HUD installed. We got the more points per level installed. Now the real question is, will the game launch? Did we do it right? Let's go ahead and find out. All right, here we are inside the game Witcher 2. This is towards the end of the game. So those of you that haven't played it, I'm not going to show anything that's going to be spoilers. But as you can see, the watch the minimap up in the upper right-hand corner. It does not... Yes, I know I am overweight. It does not move now with my direction. And as you can see, if I bring the map up, the everything seems to be pointing the right direction. See, this is where I'm supposed to go. And if you look on the mini-map, you see that little orange blinking arrow. It's pointing south, just where the proper indicator was. Now, if I had the Act 1 part of this HUD mod installed, that arrow would be pointing north on my mini-map, even though on my main map, as you can see, it is south of me. That is a strange difference between Act 1 and the rest of the game, which is bizarre. I don't know why. Maybe there was a technical reason. Maybe they had to do that that I'm not aware of. I don't know. But that is where we're at with this thing. It's a minor inconvenience, but for everything that this, the HUD does for you, it's a definite uh, thing that I can live with, and hopefully you will be able to because that spinning minimap drove me crazy. All right, that's pretty much how to mod The Witcher 2. It is pretty easy. There are some deep meat and potato things you can get into with the game in tweaking the graphics and whatnot, but we're not really going to get into that because that's just not what this particular series is about. If you have any particular questions about modding The Witcher 1 or Witcher 2, just go ahead and drop them in the comments below and I will do my best to answer them for you. All right, guys, this is Talem. Thank you for joining me for this uh, quick video of how the mod The Witcher 1 and the 2. If uh, you like the series, if you could tolerate my jabbering, go ahead and give the video a like. Consider subscribing. I would love you as a part of my community. All right, guys, I'll catch you later.